Why am I so confident that Jesus is coming soon? Why am I so confident that this is the generation that's going to witness the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? To understand this more clearly, you have to understand God's prophetic timepiece, the nation of Israel. In Matthew chapter 24, when Jesus' disciples asked him what the signs of the end would be, Jesus gives them a description of the things that would precede his second coming, which is at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 to 8, this is what we read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. One could argue that there has always been earthquakes, wars, famines, pestilences, etc. That would be true. But I think when you see how these things are increasing in intensity and frequency, just like a woman in travail that's about to give birth, you will see that we are not living in normal times. But more importantly, many are still missing the key. They are missing the key that unlocked the final countdown. Again, that key is the nation of Israel. Israel officially became a nation on May 14th, 1948. This was a huge event that, although many do not realize, started a final countdown that will conclude with the second coming of Jesus Christ when he touches down on the Mount of Olives at the end of the seven-year tribulation period and establishes his 1,000-year millennial reign. The incredible thing is, over 2,500 years before Israel officially became a nation, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that this event would occur and that it would occur in a single day. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 8, we read, Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So both the prophets Ezekiel and Isaiah prophesied that Israel would come back into the land. And Isaiah, again, prophesied specifically that it would be born in a day. And that's exactly what we saw on May 14th, 1948. Now, after Jesus explains to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 to 8, the things that would precede his second coming, he gives them the key that unlocks the final countdown. And it's located in the book of Matthew chapter 24, the same chapter, but just further down in verses 32 to 34. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 to 34, the Lord Jesus Christ says the following, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. This prophecy is also known as the parable of the fig tree. Many students of the Bible and end times eschatology will agree that the fig tree is representative of the nation of Israel. In fact, when you read through scripture and you actually look at the plant symbols of Israel, you will see very clearly that the olive tree is a symbol of Israel's religious privileges, the vine is a symbol of Israel's spiritual privileges, and the fig tree is a symbol of Israel's national privileges. Very clearly here, when you interpret this parable, Jesus is explaining, when we see Israel officially become a nation, the generation that witnesses this will not pass away until all of these things be fulfilled. Until what things be fulfilled? Everything Jesus had said prior to this in Matthew chapter 24. So the generation that witnesses Israel 
officially becoming a nation, will not pass away until all these things be fulfilled, including the seven-year tribulation period. But a lot of people will say when they look at Luke's account of the parable of the fig tree in Luke chapter 21, they say, see, Chad, right here, Luke is talking about the fig tree and all the trees. What's he referring to there? Well, let's go there. In Luke chapter 21, verses 29 to 33, this is Luke's account, again, of what Jesus said, the things that would precede his second coming at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. Luke chapter 21, verses 29 to 33, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When, ye, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. If we know that the fig tree is representative of the nation of Israel, then what are all the other trees referring to here? These other trees are referring to other nations. I want you to think about something. In 1946, just two years before Israel officially became a nation, in 1946, there was 74 independent nations. Fast forward to 1950, so two years after Israel became a nation, in 1950, there were 89 independent nations. This is what's amazing. Today, there is currently over 100, and there is currently 195 independent nations. So since Israel became a nation, 19, May 14th, 1948, there has been a massive uptick in independent nations. There's your fig tree referring to Israel when it officially became a nation, May 14th, 1943, and all the other trees referring to all the other nations, the independent nations have, have come about since Israel became a nation. Now the big question is, how long is a generation? This has been something many students of end times eschatology have debated on. However, I think we have a pretty good clue in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 10. In Psalms, chapter 90, verse 10, which this is actually a Psalms of Moses, right? Listen to this. In Psalms 90, uh, chapter 90, verse 10, we read, The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. So very clearly here in the book of Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, Moses is talking about a generation being 70 to 80 years. Now, again, I know a lot of people argue what a biblical generation is. Is it 40 years, 50 years, 70 to 80 years, 100 years, 120 years? I've heard arguments for all of them. The important thing I want you to focus on here, we know Psalms chapter 90, verse 10 is a Psalms of Moses. And he's talking about a generation being 70 and if by reason of strength 80 years. I want you to look around the world right now at what the average lifespan is. You'll see different reports, but for the most part, you will see the average lifespan of someone living on planet Earth today is usually between the 70 to the 80 year mark. In fact, right now, I believe it's closer to the 80 year mark, the average lifespan of people on Earth today. I just think it's incredible that Jesus in the parable of the fig tree tells us that the generation that witnesses Israel officially becoming a nation will not pass away until all these things are fulfilled. And then, so how long is a generation? Then we have Moses in Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, talking about a generation being 70, and if reason by strength, 80 years. And the average lifespan of people today, generally around the planet, is right in that zone between 70 to 80 years. I think that's amazing. Was Jesus giving us a clue in the parable of the fig tree as to when he would return and establish his 1,000-year millennial reign? It looks very possible. Psalms 90.10, which I just shared, makes a case that a generation is 70 to 80 years. So if Israel became a nation on May 14, 1948, and Jesus tells us in the parable of the fig tree that this generation that witnesses this will not pass away until all these things be fulfilled, and we add 70 to 80 years, 
the length of a biblical generation according to Psalms 90.10. It takes us to the years 2018 to the years 2028. Now we must remember that there is a seven-year tribulation period that needs to be added in the preceding rapture of the church. The whole point I'm trying to make without getting caught up in dates and saying the tribulation has to start this year or next year or in, uh, in 2025, the whole point I'm trying to make is we are in the window right now, folks. It's been over 74 years since Israel became a nation. Actually, in a couple weeks here, on May 14th, 2023, Israel is going to be 75 years old. So, if the tribulation period were to start this fall, for example, and I'm not saying it is, but if the tribulation period were to start in the fall of 2023, for example, that would mean it would end and Jesus would return and touch down on the Mount of Olives in the fall of 2030 to establish his 1,000-year millennial reign when Israel is 82 years old. Now, again, Moses said in Psalms 90.10, a generation being 70 and if reason by strength, 80 years but still, at 82 years old, for example, it's still in the zone. So whether the tribulation were to start this year, next year, and I'm not saying it is, or in the fall of 2025, whenever it's going to occur, the point is, we're in the window now, folks. Regardless on your view of how long a biblical generation is, here is the main point. Israel is God's prophetic timepiece. And the final countdown to Jesus' return began ticking once Israel became a nation on May 14th, 1948. When I look around right now at everything going on in the world, I look at the convergence, which is off the charts. It reiterates to me that this generational time frame is correct. All I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is a day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down he would be born of a virgin, he became flesh, he dwelt among us, and he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming. And he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.